Good morning and welcome. Thanks very much for being here and welcome to Savoy Place. This is a cool place. Um, a place um, that is going to have a lot to do with the setup for today. So we're going to explore topics of the ability to be flexible, the ability to, chapt, uh, to adapt to changing technology, the, abil the, the ability to be sustainable, and to promote accessibility. And there's no place like Savoy Place to, that it really embodies adaptation and change. Now, recognizing I'm from America, we go back to about the 1700s, and that's like good history, right? Um, but I thought it would be fun to share a little bit about Savoy Place, kind of as a setup for today. So Savoy Place, the place where we're standing, takes its name from Peter, Count of Savoy, who was given the land in 1246. We don't, we don't go back to 1246, okay? Um, during the 1381 Peasants' Revolution, the place was burned down and all its contents destroyed. In 1509, Henry VII left money in his will to rebuild Savoy Place as a hospital. Are you starting to follow along here? Over the years, mismanagement and corruption sent the hospital into decline, um, and it became a military barracks and a prison. Then in 1723, the German Lutheran Church built on this grounds, and that too was destroyed in 1877. So, where we're standing was a palace, a hospital, a military barracks, a prison, and a church. And here, and here we are today. So in 1923, the newly formed um, BBC was offered space at Savoy Place and moved in in 1925. And then in 2013, the whole place went through a refurbishment to make it, again, more flexible, more prepared to adapt to a changing technology, to improve sustainability, and promote accessibility. And I don't know if you've been in, I guess, that room or the, uh, the, the dining room down the hall. Beautiful, beautiful views of the Thames. It was really cool last night. That, that the room was beautiful. Now, it's also fitting that we're here during London Tech Week. We're not part of Tech Week, but we're here during Tech Week. Now, Tech Week professes to connect international communities from around the spectrum to address how access to tech for all can have a profoundly positive impact on societies and business. And in a lot of ways, we're going to talk about that today. Now, on a personal basis, I see some old friends in the audience, and we've had a couple of conversations. I'm proud to be representing Highwire today. Um, I'm still new to Highwire, having joined the company in uh, last November. I'm not the first in my role, but Highwire certainly has had a number of firsts. The first digital company to support scholarly publishing, the first. The first to offer a full online biology journal, full text online biology journal. The first, as, as Dan was referencing yesterday, to partner with Google Scholar. The first platform provider, and not people who claim to have a platform. The first, you know, for, for the majority of your publishing needs, we come end to end. The first to offer dynamic personalization of downloaded PDFs, and the first to host one million free full text articles. Now, again, today, our focus today, change, disruption, flexibility, sustainability, and how we can adapt. So taking a page from Spencer Johnson's famous book about adapting to change, ladies and gentlemen, our cheese is moving. It's, it, it, there's no doubt about it, it, it's moving. So if you remember who moved my cheese, um, you had the fable, you had the two mice, sniff and scurry, and you had the two little people in, caught in the maze, hem and haw. There's a lot of hemming and hawing going on in our industry right now. What are we going to do? How are we going to move? The goal of our event today, and I hope I'm demonstrating it already, is let down your guard a little bit, shake the bag, break a few eggs, and, and how we can um, welcome change and disruption. Now, I've, I've gone to the seminars. I've sat through all the different um, talks in, over, over a variety of shows. Um, Plan S has caused a lot of uncertainty. And for most of us, particularly me, as I'm trying to you know, sort through you know, what I can help my clients with next, um, it's about as clear as mud. But it also presents new opportunity. It, it, we need to change, and, and, and that's going to be the, the focus here. So regardless of what's going on and my opinion about it being clear as mud, the question is, how as a publisher can I create value outside the core content that now has to be freely available. And Mick Hegarty, Mick, wave your hand. 
He's seen this movie before. He's been through this before. We can learn from him. So no pressure, okay? All right? There you have it. So some publishers charge for content services on top of the subscription, um, but this has been faced with skepticism from our librarian clients. Like, why should I pay more for something I'm already paying a lot of money for? However, where Plan S is concerned, we need to figure out how to move revenues around, move it from one pocket to the next, look for new revenue streams. And, and, and again, Dan was talking about this yesterday. Highwire can help you find new revenue streams. Publishing by no means is the first industry to encounter this kind of change. It's a textbook example. And, this is, and, 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 and again, this is what I'm trying to get to today. So this is the world according to Miles. But this is a textbook example about an industry resisting change. OA is no longer a new subject, and we've been adapting to changing technologies for years. The key point here is we're not doing enough about it. We're not moving at a speed to keep up. The industry has transformed, but hasn't done enough to keep up with changing consumer expectations driven by other industries. And again, we, we, we've got a, a representative panel here today to talk about that, to kind of get us going. That's why Highwire organized this symposium and gathered this panel of speakers to help us welcome um, change and adaption. We need to discuss new value-added services to help our clients generate new revenue for, uh, for themselves. And, and, and we've got some ideas demonstrated here today and, and we'd like your reactions. Let's for a moment consider other industries. Kodak, or uh, this is a Kodak or an Uber moment. Um, grow, I grew up in New York, so Kodak was a big deal. Kodak was the it in upstate New York for, forever. Um, they had the first digital camera. They did nothing with it, the rest is history. The taxi industry, even though I think you do a better job here in London um, in defending the taxi industry, and it's a better service, quite frankly. Um, but back in the States, I was at SSP a couple of weeks ago, and I got in the taxi to go from the hotel to the restaurant. And the cabbie himself snickered, why are you taking a taxi, <laughs> right? If you can get an UberX, it's going to be a better car, better experience, and it's going to cost less. I took Uber home, right? But oh my goodness, right? Um, so publishing will need to shift their approach, develop new revenue streams, which won't necessarily come from the same constituents. It's going to be, going to be new, um, new buyers, if you will. Publishing by, by no means, oops, I'm sorry, I skipped. Went back to an old point. Um, so to me, this isn't about um, a revolution. It's about evolving. It's an, it's an evolution. So consider, what will people pay for beyond the base raw content for, your, uh, for the content we offer? And to remain competitive in the new digital landscape, Highwire believes that fresh thinking is needed. Um, how publishers can create those value-added services around the, the content. So you, you got the paper, the core paper, you know, that, that's been the, the start. But how are users interacting with that paper? How are they interacting? What, what are the, the data services around that piece of content? What are the peripheral services around that piece of content? And that's where we, we know, have experience and can help. We will expand on the standard and traditional discussions often held between scholarly publishers to explore a wider technology landscape and learn from other industries. That's the key thing for me today, to learn from what others have already been through. So three or four key questions as a setup. Um, and just to, to prompt everyone, as we bring the speakers up today, we're going to go through each speech, and I'd like you to save your questions to the end. You get a burning question, yeah, hands up, and it'll be up to the speaker. To, to manage, but the, the goal here is, is to get to the end and to invite you guys to participate in that discussion. We want it to be a two-way street. So how have other sectors handled digital disruption, and how can scholarly publishing learn from that experience? What macro factors are impacting how we consume and trust the information that we're getting? How might user behavior and experience look like in the future? And we've got speakers who got, who who are already moving in, in that regard. How can we at Highwire help our clients be prepared to capitalize on new future opportunities? 